Hi, I'm Konstantinos, and this is the fourth part of the Context Reimagine series. Today, I prepared for you an example on how to maintain the message mapping context in custom user-defined functions. Every time the business logic demands a complex message mapping, it is very common to use custom UDFs in order to keep the mapping clear instead of mapping spaghettis. That way, anyone who is going to look on your mapping will be able to understand the logic very fast. So let's go and let's have a look at an example. So in this example, the input and output message types are the same, but we want to manipulate the subunit segment in the output. In this example, we are going to read the data for the attribute 2 from the backend using an RFC lookup. For the ATR2 element under the subunit node, we are going to read the values from the SAP backend using a custom RFC lookup. The RFC will return to us completely random numbers from 1 to 100. And the logic is that every time we get an odd number, we want to add a context change to our output structure. So let's have a look on our mapping elements one by one. First of all, for our RFC lookup, we need the subunit and the attribute 2 element and the output of this RFC lookup will be the random number that I said. Uh, we don't need the contexts, so we will remove the contexts because we want to add them according to our custom logic. So we remove the contexts and then here comes our custom UDF that will add the context as needed. So let's have a look at it. In the custom user-defined functions, we need to write in Java, and I prepared a very simple code in order to accomplish our logic. First of all, we look through all the random numbers that the RFC lookup returned, and because it is a string and there may be uh, some spaces in it, we need to remove the spaces and then convert the string to integer. Then we just check if the number is even or odd, and if it is an odd number, we add the result list.cc to our result list. There is one more thing that I want to mention before we go to the testing. Uh, please keep in mind that if the last value is an odd number, we will add a context change at the last place. Uh, that way we have an empty entry on our result list in the last place. So we need to remove it in order to keep our target structure clear. So I created also a small UDF like this, which is just removing the empty values from our list. Okay, so now let's go to the testing and let's see what well, will be the results. So as you can see, we've got even value, even value, odd value, and a context change. And again, an odd value and a context change. And on the last place, there was an odd value and a context change and everything works. Let's try to run it once more. You can see that we've got only even values, no context changes once more. Again, after the odd value, we've got a context change. So that way you can see, you can very easily manipulate the context changes using user-defined functions. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, hit me up on LinkedIn. And of course, don't forget to check out the rest of INT4 videos.